And like, one thing I'll say is, had I realized that if you're ever going to do anything novel or new, or even if it's an idea that's been done a million times, but it's your take on it, of course, experts aren't going to think it's going to work because subconsciously, they only think things are going to work that they've already seen proven work, <laughs> right? And I didn't know that for a long time and they mean so well, but they're seeing it. But sub even though a lot of them are visionaries, they're only able to see what you're doing through their own lens of experience. Right, so let's talk about the gut then, because yeah. there's multiple things that you just said there that all you've led back to the gut. Mm, and yeah. in hindsight, everyone listening and watching are going, well done for trusting your gut. Mm. But there are many times that, at least for me, I've trusted my gut and I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I've learned my lesson and then yeah. I move on. Yeah. So, um, so I want to start with your on your news anchor, you've got the blotches, nothing was working for you, you're going yeah. to try your own. A, what made you trust your gut in that sense? Because like you said, you've um, you had college debt, so you have mm -hmm. all this stuff that's stacked yeah. against you. Yeah. It's based on beauty, which for women is very emotional. Yeah. Um, so how did you keep going and like try to find a solution instead of just hide away? Like what are the things mm. that you told yourself that pushed you to keep going and trust your gut that this was the right path for you? Mm -hmm. I've always had this feeling deep down inside, like I meant to do great things mm. that help other people. Interesting. Um, I've always kind of just known mm. it. Even when I took the low paying job to learn journalism instead of like a super high paying, mm. um, you know, consultant right. or a banking job. Um, I just felt, I just feel like if we get one life, I want to like the day I die, which God willing, it's a long time in the future. Like I want to literally know there's nothing left in me mm. that could have been used to help someone else. And you felt that even back when you were the news anchor. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So because I actually yeah. didn't feel like that. No? I do now. You do I feel now. Like, yeah. I feel like so now, like it, my, right? my purpose of all the failures I've had, all the problems, all the health issues. My purpose now is to speak it so that yes. it can help other people. And but it back, does. But back when I you. started, it didn't. Mm. It was actually, if I can be so honest, it was out of pure ego. Mm. So when people told yeah. me, you can't do it, you're not good enough to do it, you're dumb, you're stupid, yeah. what are you doing, you're not yeah. talented. I was just um, what's it, stubborn enough to say, I can do it. I'm going to prove them wrong. And right. it was out of stubbornness, not out of like, I want to share it with the world, yeah. that actually pushed me to then show myself yeah. what I was capable of. So you were driven by ego because so, you're like, I'm going to prove them wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Then I yeah. realized, wow, I'm actually, I actually did do it and I'm kind of capable. And yes. so then it's like, well, if you're capable, what else can you do? Yes. And so that became the foundation of then, okay, I maybe I have a superpower. Mm -hmm. So if I have a superpower now, how am I going to help others? So it kind of became a transition for me versus yeah. then just an initial like from the beginning. So that's why it's really impressive yeah. that you felt that even before you had any validation mm, yeah. that you can do it or that you, you, know, you have the ability to do it. Yeah, I've always had that, just that feeling. And it's funny that you say this, I've definitely done things for ego. I have definitely done things for ego. And most of the time when I do that, I regret it. Oh, it doesn't feel right, right? I right? You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I do stuff on ego and it, it turns out great and whatever, but it's like, it doesn't compare to that feeling of knowing you're doing something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you spend the time to really think about your why and why you're doing it, you know, why or how it's bigger than yourself, that will sustain you through so many hard times, right? Because just hearing some of what you're sharing, I'm having flashbacks even to, to so many of the of the hard times, even even once we finally got yeses and finally we're on QVC and all of that, it's it, when you're putting in 100 hour weeks and when stuff doesn't go your way and all that, and when your why is bigger than yourself, mm. it, it, it sometimes it's like that's the only thing that gets you through those hard times and, and keeps you going. Because sometimes if it's just for ourselves or our own ego, it's not a strong enough why. When you are so burnt out and you feel defeated and you feel like self-doubt's entering your mind, it's like money isn't a strong enough why um, because you can go get another job and get money. You know what I mean? It's like. It's like really peeling back the layers on what you're doing and really getting to that, that, that true why that 
mean so much to you. And for some people it's, I'm gonna change this generation of my family. Where I come mm. from is not where I'm going. I'm not gonna have my children grow through what I went through, right? And that why is huge. It doesn't have to be a why to go change the outside world. It might be a why to change inside your own home. And sometimes just like not, just, just not giving up and just keeping going is like, is, is the difference too in, in making it, you know what I mean? Oh, so how do you do that then when you're in a moment, yeah. so you've got your why, very yeah. strong why yes. you're going to impact women and how they feel about themselves. It's yes. not just like you want to make them super glamorous. It's yeah. like, you're going to change how they feel about themselves yeah. and that can lead to so many incredible things, being a better mother, being a better wife, being yeah. a better employee, a better business owner, whatever it is, mm -hmm. I think that can really lead to something. Yeah. Um, so you've got your strong why. Now, you got your strong why, but you only have $1,000 left. Yes, I know. How do you, is the why strong enough to get you through it? Or yeah. was there something else that you had to do to tell yourself, like, no, keep going? Because that's where people go like, all right, look, mm -hmm. at some point, if something is failing, yeah. at some point you have to let it go. Yeah, so, uh, so two things. So for me, um, and this is so personal to everyone and to what they believe in, yeah. for me, faith is huge in my life and I feel like I hear my faith through my gut feelings. Mm, you know, okay. I really do. And, um, and there were nights where I was just like, is this what we're supposed to do? That combined with really freaking hard work mm. and like, let's just keep it really real because sometimes, and I love, I don't know how we're going here to Denny's and all the really real stuff, but what I let's love about it, it yeah. is, you know, if, if any of your, 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 you know, your community has heard any of my story before, they've probably just heard the, the billion dollar right. fairy tale. And right. the, the real, real of it is when we were under a thousand dollars, I, we were trying to get SBA loans from anyone that would give one. No one would give one. And they, shouldn't have because <laughs> right. it's like you know you're trying to show a business plan for for projected sales when you don't even have any you know we were doing two to three orders a day on our website um but you know what it, it's a choice yeah. i chose instead of having a job that paid me a salary i chose to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and it's like okay but you got to hustle and you got to, you know, sometimes that's what you, you have to just do. Because you didn't take um, like a day off, right? You, oh you no. guys, you and your husband worked like a hundred hour work week, seven days weeks. a week for, yes, 10 years. for 10 years. And I think it, like yes. you said, it's important to stress that. You freaking busted your ass. Yeah, we, we did. And it was like when we finally, when we were under, we got down a thousand dollars, we went and spent part of it on Ikea desks to put in the living room because we had an in-person office tour with California Bank and Trust, which was the last bank that was gonna consider giving us an SBA loan. And, uh, but that, you know, we got the last, the last person said yes on the SBA loan, which kept us alive a little bit longer. Mm. We were still only doing the two to three orders a day from our website and uh, and and right around that time we got a first yes finally for QVC but we had one shot and only 10 minutes um, uh, and, and you'd been going after QVC for, for a long time going right? after him for a long time and always hearing no I I remember oh my gosh like the number of no's from everybody. And so, so there is a guy named Alan Burke who was like the head of beauty at QVC mm -hmm. and he got all of those like really high-end department store beauty brands to really want to go on QVC mm -hmm. and all the designer brands. And so he was the head of all of it. And I remember one day I finally got, um, and it was a call from his assistant saying he wants to have a call with you. He's reviewed your product. And I like thought this was going to be our big break. And he, he was very quick. <laughs> And he said, um, I reviewed your product with our buyers and you're not the right fit for QVC. Uh, I'm sorry and I wish you the best of luck. And I just remember crying myself to sleep that night and just, you know, have you ever like had something happen where, you know, that goes wrong or doesn't go your way and then like the next day you wake up and you like hoped it was a dream? Yes. And then you're like, it wasn't. You have to relive it almost, yes. Yes. So for you, in those moments, you're hearing no over and over again. Most people would have stopped at number one. Yeah. A lot of people would have stopped at number two. Majority would have stopped at number three. You kept going. Kept going. This was like yeah. years and years and years of you like hounding Sephora and QVC. And so yes. what is it? Is it just your innate ability to get back up? Or did you have to coach yourself in your mind to say, no, you believe in this, remember your why? Like, what does that actually yeah. look like? Both, 
I feel like when I look back on things, mm -hmm. and this is what I love, yeah. it's like even if you're in a space right now in your life where you're like, I, this isn't where I want to be, mm -hmm. I would just trust it because I look back at like when I was, when I was a news anchor. I would get emails that were so mean, like, are you pregnant? Are you, right? I had a news director at one of my jobs that would um, just tear me to shreds, um, appearance-wise, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I, I really feel like it helped make me really, it helped me get really strong mm -hmm. so that rejection started to hurt a little less, um, but it still hurts. Um, it still hurts, but resiliency is like the most important skill, I think. Mm -hmm. I think what's tricky is going, okay, Am I putting good money after bad, right? Which is like a famous saying, meaning does every sign tell me this is a bad idea and do I keep wasting my time and money? You know what I mean? That's the mm -hmm. hardest thing to know, mm -hmm. especially when you're building your business. And for me, the deciding factor for me was, was praying about it and realizing that I needed to keep my faith bigger than my fear because I just felt in my gut what I was doing mattered and it was needed. I think fear kills more dreams than like almost anything else. Self-doubt and fear, I think kills more dreams than almost anything. I was um, reading that famous Jay-Z quote where he says, um, the genius thing we did was we never gave up. Mm. And it's like, it's so true sometimes. And, and what's crazy is I would, have, I would have saved myself so many nights of crying myself to sleep had I known what I know now, mm -hmm. which is just that if you're doing something novel or that, that, that's different, that hasn't been done before, of course, all these people that are experts aren't going to get it right away because there's no, it's never been done before. So there's no proof out there that tells them, oh yeah, this is a good idea. Or, oh yeah, this is going to succeed in your stores or, you know, it, it's never been done before. So I shouldn't have been surprised yeah. that all these people that I thought were like, you know, they would know if, you know, they're going to see our product and like love it right away. And the other thing I learned was by persistence and by not letting those no's destroy every ounce of, of, of confidence I had and mm -hmm. Every single person that told us no has now told us yes. But some of them told us no for years mm. and many, many, many times. And here's the crazy thing, and I don't know the answer to this, but what I do know, Lisa, is had I listened to any of, a lot of the ways they told me to change our product or change our positioning, had I listened to that, I don't think our brand would have worked. Yeah. I don't think I'd be sitting here having sold it to L'Oreal because L'Oreal has a, a lot of other great brands that do what's already been done really well. They're the best at it in the world. Had I not done something totally different that went against what all these other experts were saying to do, it, I wouldn't have created something of value that complemented their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's like, I think it's um, Peter Diamandis. I think he said this, uh, the day before a breakthrough is just another dumb idea. Uh, and it's yes. like, it's so true. Yes. Because yes. you're getting no's a million times. You're also yes. telling people, uh, people are being mean. Like yeah. in my intro, I said someone said to you, you know, who's ever going to buy makeup from you? Yeah. So again, that like was one of the toughest things I've ever dealt with in my own head. Oh, because explain. what had happened was, so so we had no money, as you know, as we've covered. <laughs> and um, this, the, this investor who, he had invested in a lot of consumer product companies. So he had a a big, um, he was the head of a, a big private equity firm, mm. and a lot of companies I love uh, were his products that he had invested in and sold. Okay. And uh, we finally got a meeting with him, and he was super interested in. So it's someone you're super excited about. Yes. Someone you're yes. amped about. Have a you lot admire, of respect for. Respect. Yes. Okay, that's it yes. makes it even worse. I know, and 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 they loved our idea of what we were doing with our products of their company. I'm like, this is amazing because if they invest in us, then um, a I'm not gonna, we're not gonna go bankrupt tomorrow. And B, maybe they can help us get into these, these retail stores. And like, I just, I was so excited. And then I, I'll never forget this. In person, this guy was like a foot and a half from me. Um, and, and they said, we're gonna, we've decided to pass on the investment. It's a no. And I said, well, can you share with me a little bit why? Because, you know, feedback's always a gift, mm -hmm. even when we don't wanna hear it. And, um, and he said, well, do you want me to be honest with you? And I said, yes. And he goes, I'm not sure if women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you, you know, with your body and your weight, is what he said to me. And I remember looking at him and, and just like 
while I tried to handle it with grace and just say thank you for your, you know, thank you for your feedback, I knew so strongly in my gut in that moment. So it was this combination of being hurt, really obviously hurt, but I just had this strong gut feeling that said he's wrong, like he's wrong. And sometimes you just need to like bust out Google and just inspire yourself. So I, I remember after he said that, just for myself, I would look up so many of the people I admire most who I think are just making huge changes in the world. And I would ask myself, if they changed their body, would they do better? No. Like if they got all skinny or got all whatever it is, like people that change the world, what they look like. I think is is irrelevant. I think it's how they feel, it's their heart, it's their intentions. And and I would just, you know, fill myself up with stuff like that just to get myself back to that place of confidence again. Mm -hmm. And when we finally, so here's the thing, uh, we got to a beauty show, this big beauty show in New York City. There are 6,000 women there and they walk the show. And what happens in the show, this is how we got on QVC, by the way. If you're a brand that's had a new product launch that year, you can pay money to go there. You get a three foot table and you demonstrate your product. And so we had signed up to do it. And the hope by doing this is that the 6,000 women walking and testing out all the new products, that one of them will, you know, um, uh, work for a department store and get you in there. Or one of them, or they'll vote on your product and you'll, you'll get one of the awards. And so we were there doing that, and QVC had a huge booth there. And uh, you're supposed to stay, you're not allowed to leave your three foot table. But I kept like trying to sneak away to see like if there were the buyers at the QVC booth, and I'd rush back to my table. And <laughs> what I didn't realize is one of the women that had I'd been showing the product to was a QVC show host, and I didn't recognize her. And at the time, and I don't know if I was just spacing out or what. And I, you know, so I was showing her the product and like telling her how much, you know, why it exists and why it's different different special. And she said, uh, you know, my name is Miss Lisa Mason. I'm a QVC show host. And, uh, and I just looked at her and she goes, I want you to know, I think your concealer is really special. And I think our women at, at home, our QVC gals, they would love this product. And, um, and I want you to know, I just went and told the buyer, I think we should have your product on. And I looked at her and tears just started streaming down my face. And I think I freaked her out. She's like, oh, sugar, I don't have any. <laughs> like, I think she's like, oh, well, who, what did I just yeah, She's yeah, like, yeah. I don't have any power to get your, I just want to let you know I did this. Yeah, I believe yeah, in yeah. you. And I was like, thank you. And I was like, can I send you product? Aww. She's like, no, sugar, but you know, I just want to let you know. I don't and um, so long story short, we got a meeting uh, at QVC and we got a yes. Uh, but what that meant was we have 10 minutes, one airing of 10 minutes, um, and you either hit their sales goal or you don't come back, right? And what I know now that I didn't know at the time is you might have 10 minutes, but if you're live on the air and you're not hitting numbers, all of a sudden your clock will go from 10 to 6. And then you're like, and you can't, you can't panic and you have to have fun because, <laughs> and you can't try to sell because the second you try to sell, nothing sells. Nothing sells. Nothing sells. So, <laughs> and like, and it'll be at six minutes and like, if it's really not doing well, it cuts to two. And what's so hard is you're live on national television mm -hmm. and you know, in the back of your head, I just lost a product or I just lost, mm -hmm. like, it's so much pressure. Thankfully, I didn't know that part in the, the first airing, but what I did know was we had 10 minutes and we had to hit a sales target or never come back. And uh, we needed to uh, sell over 6,000 units of our concealer in that 10 minute Whoa. window. And I just felt like, okay, if women can see this live on television, how it works, like, and they can see how it will, you know, change their lives. I can show it live on TV. And I just felt like this is it. And then here's where this appearance stuff resurfaced, right? And for any woman out there or man who struggles with like, do what I look matter? Does my weight matter? Does my size matter? Do my clothes matter? It sucks when sometimes things all around us tell us they do, right? And this is a moment where I had to make a decision where everything was on the line for my business. And what had happened, Lisa, was we um, had met with, out, there's all these outside consultants and they help a lot of people do well on television. And okay. um, you know they'll give you advice, like here's how you, you know, do your demonstrations and here's the type of models mm. to use and here's you know, what to say and not to say. And, and when I met with all the consultants, they, they all told me I needed to do 
uh, this formula to work on air, which was cast only perfect skin models, um, all like the same age and skin tone and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but I want to show my bright red rosacea and show how this works for me. Mm -hmm. And I want to show real women that are different ages and have different skin problems. And I want women all across the country that have never seen a model who looks like them and skin that looks like theirs. I want to show them live why I made this product. Mm -hmm. And every single uh, uh, consultant said that will not work. And if they want, if I want to have any chance of succeeding in my business, that I will do what they're saying, which is to do the formula, the only formula that had ever worked in beauty. And it was the most stressful probably moment of my whole career and decision of my whole career because everything was on the line. Yeah, break it down and then how you decided to just ignore them and yeah. do your own thing because like you said, everything's on the line. Yeah. What did that process look like yeah. for you where you said they're experts, but I'm still not gonna listen? So I flew, I was freaking out. I flew out <laughs> to QVC um, a week early. I love the honesty um, by the way. That's oh my awesome. gosh, it's just, it was, and it's so funny, I took, because we had no money, so I took this, it was like three or four connections because it was the cheapest way to get to Philly. Um, I got there, I was in a rental car, and I drove to the QVC parking lot every single day for a week, and I sat there, literally trying to envision what was gonna happen in that 10 minutes, um, almost like the way I imagine Olympic athletes envision success, and I just knew in that moment, like I knew what I needed to do. I knew that if I, if I went on QVC and did what everyone else had done, maybe my business would have succeeded at that time, but A, it wouldn't have been authentic to who I am. I am not a makeup artist. I don't do makeup artist looks on people. It's not why I created the brand. It's not my why. Mm -hmm. So I would have been putting money and fear above the why I did this. And I just remember sitting in the parking lot and knowing I, even if I try and I go out there and I show my bare face, which is the last thing I want to do right. on national television, showing my bright red rosacea, but it wasn't about me. It was about, I wanted to shift culture and beauty. I wanted there to be models that look like real women. I imagine real women all across the country who have forgotten that they're beautiful and have forgotten that they matter. And I realized in that moment, I, if I don't sell and we miss the sales goal, at least for that 10 minutes, there will be women that turn their television on and they see models, aspirational models, who I'm standing on television calling beautiful that look like them. And I'm showing women with, with skin problems and issues and I want them to know we're all in this together, like we've all got this. But it was so scary and I remember the camera goes live, the clock's at 10 minutes, and I remember it started counting down. And, and I had this demonstration planned on my wrist, right, with where I put these two uh, beautiful department store concealers that are top sellers and ours, and I would bend my wrist and show, they start breaking up and cracking, right, and ours doesn't, which is why it would cover my rosacea. So I had this thing planned and I started doing it, but I was so stressed out. TV, I'm not nervous for. It was the business, the weight of everything. Mm. And my hand was like this. And I was like, just like shaking like crazy. Shaking. And I was trying to show. And finally, Lisa's like, thank you, sugar. And she shoves my <laughs> hand under the, the podium that we're presenting from. And I remember um, at the 10 minute mark, literally the 10 minute mark, the sold out sign came up. And I just looked at Lisa yeah. and I just started crying. Because mm. I was like, it was like real women have spoken. I'm so glad I listened to my gut. Mm. And I think sticking with the authenticity of our brand, even when everyone was saying it wasn't gonna resonate, mm. is why I, it's the only reason that we now built a billion dollar company. Um, something you just said actually, so you, you've spent so much time and energy and effort putting every ounce of your being into it. Yes. You and your husband yes. being super authentic, making sure yeah. that you don't divert from your authenticity, mm -hmm. um, being true to who you are, and then you sell the company. Yeah. What did you believe was possible then? And did you learn to trust your gut then? Like, when did you start learning mm -hmm. 
to trust your intuition, to hear those voices. Cause I, I get impulses too. I get hits of what I'm supposed to do. And I think some people don't get them. So you share a lot of tips in the book, by the way. So we're not gonna be able to share everything on this interview. Read the book. Jamie shares a ton of tips in this book to help you on your journey. If you're a small business, her advice is incredible. If you're growing your business, if you're a big business, if you're a leader, yeah. if you're someone who's an entrepreneur, if you're someone who wants to be more creative, all of the chapters in that book give you nuggets of wisdom and advice and tips to help you on your journey. It's like really is for everyone, just so you know. So you're going to get some tips, but but Jamie, in terms of that intuition and gut, tell us about that Denny's waitress that you were and what was possible then to you? Yeah. So I've always felt, and you know, um, I've always felt deep down inside, like, like I was destined to um, serve in a big way or do something that, that impacted other people uh, on all of our own journey. I always had that inkling, didn't know what it was. And uh, working as a Denny's waitress, this is so funny, working as a Denny's waitress, oh my gosh. So, so the Denny, and I was, I was working to try and save up for, for school and all that. Uh, and pay my way through school. And uh, Denny's, it's so funny how so many things teach us lessons, right? So I won't get into this too much, but like the Denny's I worked at, the kitchen was a mess in the sense that they would take an hour to get pancakes out sometimes. So I'm an introvert by nature. And I was like, oh my gosh, people are getting mad and they're leaving because it's taking an hour to get pancakes. Uh, and, and I'm not getting a tip. And I really need a tip because I'm trying to pay for through school. And so I learned to talk to people and try to be like, and try to just connect with them and, 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 and ask about their stories and that whole thing. And, and it probably planted a seed in me of understanding the importance of operations of a business and the right operational infrastructure. So even as a, even as a, you know, in that whole different industry as a Denny's waitress, I really think every single thing we go through in life helps us uh, build that foundation, right, of, of where we're, we're, we're going to be. But, you know, in the time I was a Denny's waitress, here's really where my gut started speaking to me. And this is for everybody out there. It's never too late to start learning how to hear your own intuition, right? Most people never do. Most people never do. But just like faith or like anything else, I think it's never too late. I think everyone can start now. And I, I really think that it's a journey. It's a journey of building on experiences and then looking back and going, oh, I didn't listen to my gut there. I had that instinct and and and, and it didn't go so well. Or, oh, I, I decided to go against everyone else. I trusted my gut and here's what happened, right? And I think for all of us, it's every area of life. I mean, this is something a lot of your community might relate to uh, is like, or not, but if you've ever dated a sketchy guy or, <laughs> or you have a friend where you're just like, I don't think they're telling me the truth. Something's not adding up. We kind of know it, right? Like, like so many people can hopefully, <laughs> hopefully relate to this at some point in their life, but they've dated someone where they're like, I don't really believe him that his phone just broke and that he just like disappeared for a day, right? I, I don't think he, like he, you know, you, you know, and you can choose, we all choose like, oh, I'm just going to ignore it and I'm just going to stay in love <laughs> or you know what? Like, okay, I'm done. Like we all know. And I feel like we continue building those experiences in life. Um, and, and then we look back on them and, and it's like, now I'm able, you know, uh, looking back on so, so much of this journey, I'm able to really know that some of my biggest mistakes and misjudgments and miscalculations came when I went against that inkling inside, right? And I trusted people that are touted visionaries or, or, or experts. And it's good to trust experts and visionaries, except if your gut, if your deep gut inkling goes against it, because knowing that you stayed to that through line of authenticity for you and what you're called to do is so important. And learning how to tune in and hear that can literally change the whole course of your life. And one, uh, one big example of that is probably one of the greatest business lessons I've ever learned and, and life lessons. And it came down to this moment where after three years of hearing no's, and by the way, John, at one point, I think it was two years into our business, I actually was able to get, oh, and just to share a scrappy tip for anyone out there, like really building their business who can't afford to hire people. I was like, 
emailing everyone on LinkedIn. I was, I would find anyone that worked at the company. I would just try to get in some way, send them products, ask them to, you know, and I'd finally like hustled my way into a guy named Alan Burke, who is the head of all of beauty at QVC. Uh, he had built this billion dollar, multi-billion dollar beauty industry there, a, a, a department there. And I got through to his assistant and I begged her to like have him look at our product and get us meetings and all those things uh, in front of the buyers. And anyways, long story short, I got a a, a call saying he is going to take a call with me and he's reviewed the products. And I thought, oh my gosh, this head of everything, Alan Burke, if he's going to spend his precious time, like calling me, it's going to be good. Right. And I was so excited. And I was in, I was pacing around waiting for the call in our office, which was our living room. And, um, and Paula was there and I was like, oh, I was freaking out. He called. And right when I answered the phone, obviously I was like, like, I mean, we had, I didn't know what we were going to do. Right. We were down to no money. I was freaking out. And I, uh, I said, you know, okay. I, to my head, I'm like, they're lucky to have us. I'm going to be, he's lucky to get us like all these things, right. Pumping myself up. And I got on the phone and he said, you know, hello, Jamie, this is Alan Burke from QVC. Uh, and I'm like, Alan, it's so great to talk to you and this whole thing. And anyways, he got right to the point and he said, we've reviewed your products with all the buyers here in the beauty department. And it's unanimous that it's a no, we're going to pass on, uh, on your company. You're not the right fit for QVC and you're not the right fit for our customers, but we wish you well. And I was like, oh, but I am the right fit. And I just tried to pour into another pitch. And uh, he thanked me for loving QVC, but said it's a no. Got them. Okay. So then I cry myself to sleep three nights in a row. <laughs> uh, if you've ever had bad news and you like wake up in the morning, and you hope it was a dream and you're like, Oh, it wasn't right. It was like that day after day after day. So fast forward another year, we're at a big beauty show and one of the QVC hosts tried our product. There were 6,000 women there. She tried our product and said, you need to be on QVC. She told the buyer, we got one shot. We got our first big yes, but, but what it meant, and this is one of the greatest life lessons and business lessons I've ever learned as it pertains to trusting your gut and staying authentic to who you are. We got one shot on QVC and here's what it meant. We got a 10 minute window to go live in front of hundred million homes and sell our product. But what it also meant was, and at the time we were selling only two to three orders a day on our website, right? Fulfilling them out of our living room, driving to the post office. Uh, so we're only selling two to three orders a day, barely staying alive. We had to, they ordered over 6,000 units of our concealer to sell in just a 10 minute window in order to hit their sales goal or not come back. And it was a consignment deal, which meant we weren't paid for any of it. And whatever sold, we got paid for, but whatever didn't sell would get shipped back to us. So it's like never, as an entrepreneur, never accept a purchase order you can't afford to lose. But at this point, we were like, out of options. And it just felt like, you know what, let's just go all in. So we said, yes, we applied for SBA loans. And I think the first 22 banks said, no, bank number 23 gave us an SBA loan to cover just the manufacturing costs of those 6,000 units. And so literally everything was on the line. I flew out to QVC a week early. And you know how a lot of times athletes will envision themselves on the podium or landing the triple axle or scoring the touchdown. Like you have, you visualize stuff. I flew out there a week early and I sat in this rental car in the parking lot of QVC, which is in Pennsylvania. And I just started envisioning everything. Like I was trying to pretend I was an athlete and I was like visualizing everything I could, like the sold out sign coming up across the screen. And here's the moment that became hard. We hired third-party consultants that are amazing at helping people succeed selling on television. And uh, they all told me the same thing. They said, if you're going to have any shot at success, you need to use this type of model, which was the same type of model I'd seen in magazines my whole life. Uh, you need to do your sell this way. And I would argue with them. I'd say, okay, but that's not why I created the product. And also, like, what if I just, like, take my makeup off and show my bright red rosacea on national TV so I can prove live the product works. And like, I would say like, oh my gosh, if I'm sitting at home and I am 70 years old or I have hyperpigmentation or, or this skin challenge or this skin tone or this skin problem, if I don't see someone that looks like me, how do I know it's going to work for me? And like, we would argue and they wanted us to win. They wanted the best for us. And like, listen, 
this is what you, this is the best advice we can give you. Here's what you need to do. And like, one thing I'll say is, had I realized that if you're ever going to do anything novel or new, or even it's an idea that's been done a million times, but it's your take on it, of course, experts aren't going to think it's going to work because subconsciously they only think things are going to work that they've already seen proven work. Right. And I didn't know that for a long time and they mean so well, but they're seeing it. But even though a lot of them are visionaries, they're only able to see what you're doing through their own lens of experience. And so anyways, long story short, I didn't have a chance to do it both ways. It was like everything was on the line and It's really easy to say, oh, I'm going to stick with authenticity and my mission. But then when you're in a moment where everything's on the line and you know you might lose your entire company, it's really hard to just tune in and trust your gut, right? Put your own gut instinct on a pedestal instead of the expert's advice. And I sat in that car for a week and I stared at the front door of the QVC building. And I knew the next time I walked through those doors, I would either walk out bankrupt (laughs) or with like my whole life changed. And the more I prayed about it, I would sit there in that car, literally crying, trying to like, like God take this from me. Cause it feels so heavy and just tell me what to do. And it came down to a couple of things. I imagined who my customer was and I would just kind of imagine who she is watching at home. And for some reason I kept imagining like a single mom in Nebraska folding laundry who had, who was like too busy to remember she mattered and remember she's beautiful and that she's enough. And I just remember this moment where I was like, you know what? I would rather, if she's going to bless me with five seconds of her precious time, I would rather have her look up on her TV screen and see me showing real women who look like her, calling them beautiful and meaning it. Even if she buys nothing, I'd rather that happen than like me sell a ton of product and stand for nothing. And so it was like, I knew what I had to do, but it doesn't mean it's easy. Right. And when the 10 minute clock started, we went live on the air. And by the way, John, when, when uh, you, you probably know this, I didn't know this until I got there. When the 10 minute clock starts, you don't just get 10 minutes for sure. If you're a minute or two in and you're not selling enough, your clock cuts and it jumps down to two minutes and you just like lost six minutes. And it's the most stressful thing and most high pressure thing, right? Cause they don't mess around. Like you hit sales goals or, or, or that's it, which is any business. But so the 10 minute clock goes up. It's like nine 59, nine Jamie, I, I got to stop you there for a second. Yeah, I, wa- I yeah. want people to realize this, like your future depends on this moment. Like I'm thinking about this. Do you think intuition is grossly misunderstood and underrated? I think it's misunderstood because I think that we have so much noise around us. I believe Gary, like every person listening, whether they're 12 years old or 112 years old, I think, I think we all have intuition, like a knowing inside of us. And I think our knowing's always right. I think our knowing is more. I'm I'm sorry, finish. No, no, I was going to say, I think our knowing is more powerful even than anyone else's advice but I think that we have so much noise around us from other people's opinions to our own oh, self-doubt, right? That it gets so loud, we start to not even be able to hear our own intuition anymore. So most people haven't even heard their own intuition in a long time or they don't know how. I would tell you that I couldn't applaud that POV more. It is my belief that my happiness, which matters to me the most, and then comma, my success, which I have pride in my professional life, is. predicated on my inability to compromise my intuition. I believe intuition is uncomfortably misunderstood. I believe that A students and very narrow uh, kind of rigid thinkers, which most people are, have demonized intuition. Mm. I think intuition is looked upon as careless and is positioned as silly or flaky, or whatever else you wanna call it. And I will tell you that it is basically something that I've started exploring with myself and I believe it is a category of information that I will talk a lot more about because basically everything good that I've decided that has gone on to be very, very good has been far more based on intuition than anything else. I, you know, I have the exact same experiences. Like, like how I broke through this crazy crowded beauty 
space and, and built something that ended up passing all of the, the companies I used to save my tip money as a Denny's waitress to buy in department stores was literally figuring out how to hear my own intuition and then trust it. That's the other part of it, right? And like, I love that you're talking about this. And by the way, for so many people, that's how they hear God or their faith, whatever faith they practice, right? right. Or or even the universe, they hear it through their own intuition. And um, I think it's like, I think it's your superpower. That's what I think. Um, I think that it's literally the one thing that changes everything that if I were an entrepreneur or even just someone that wanted to go after a dream or I mean, that's the biggest thing I would focus on is how do I tune into and hear my own gut? And how do I differentiate that from all the what, noise around me or other what, people's? What, 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 what is your intuition? <laughs> it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I do say that a lot, I, I just realized. What is your intuition on the other ingredient needed for this to actually work, which is the ability to be comfortable with failure? Because I'll mm -hmm. tell you the reason I'm in love with my intuition is a couple of reasons. One, humility. My intuition has been the driver of so much success. It has also led to many failures. Mm -hmm. It is my capacity to be comfortable in my micro failure that has allowed me to continuously trust my intuition. Thoughts? Yeah, thoughts are, okay, I'm gonna say something you might freak out over or disagree no, I'm really with. excited. I think, <laughs> I think every time your intuition leads you to a failure, I don't think it's a failure. I think it's part of your, 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 uh, destiny and your destined and your serendipitous journey where you had to build that muscle so can in order I, to so carry can, the so weight can I, of so, your success. So can I stop you? Because I don't yes. think that's crazy at all. I actually, it makes me want to ask you something else. Do you believe that your optimism in your blood and soul is also a in required ingredient to make what we're talking about here work? Because what I'm thinking about is the people on the other side, right? Yeah. And now we're, they're listening to two successful people talk about intuition and they're basically saying, fuck these two. Like, okay, good, but like, you guys got lucky. And I know that I know a million people that have quote unquote got lucky in different levels of success financially, um, but have happiness of their journey. But it is ingredients, it's a, it's a concoction. It is not a straight like, it's kind of like diseases, right? It's never like, oh, pepper. No, it's like, for example, with COVID, I hear like it's this thing and then the zinc can get in. It's mixtures, right? HIV, right? It was a cocktail. I'm listening carefully to you. We went intuition. Now what I wanna know, we, then we went with capacity to be comfortable with failure, AKA humility. Now I'm asking you because your answer is like, no, no, Gary, let me send you a different way. And I'm with you on this. I, actually, I view them as micro failures, but to your point, life is so serendipitous, you just don't know. You know, but, I, but I'm fascinated by your next, the next statement, which looks like this. Do you believe that your optimism allows this all to work because if you are looking at losses as in, well, this was meant to be part of my journey and this scar is actually attractive, because that's how I think about it. I think about all those losses as scars and like that scar giving you character and that's attractive. Do you believe that optimism was an incredibly big factor and ingredient in your success? I think optimism is great. I think though that Knowing why we're doing what we're doing, listening to our gut and going after our calling, like literally living our calling, I think that's the victory. Hold on, um, though. hold on though. Yeah. Here's, here's an interesting question. Every human needs levels of affirmation along the way to sustain yeah. that, right? Yeah. And so in the beginning where you're not seeing those results, mm -hmm. for many, and I, you might've, you know, I've always seen results pretty quickly in my good calls, so, I, I always try to think about someone who's not seeing it. So because they don't have optimism, they have delusion and they think they're gonna be, you know, Beyonce when they can't sing, right? Do, do you feel like the, you know, believing in your calling gets affirmed along the way? What do you rely on in that beginning? Don't you think blind faith is actually completely grounded in optimism? I mean, for me, my faith is a huge part of my of I'm my sorry, life. I don't, I, I'm gonna take religion as faith out. On, on yeah. the, I'm saying, I'm, I was, you know, I'm just thinking about you, young you in this moment, and I'm really fascinated by it. I'm meant to do this. Because what you're talking about is what I love, which is the journey. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't- I'm trying to get victory. into your, go ahead, please. 
Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think the victory is the outcome, right? I don't think the victory. Listen, I know, I know how accomplished you are and everything. I know you're going to have the New York Jets one day. I know all that. But I don't think that's the victory. I think the victory is 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 the journey of actually oh, yeah. like stepping into all of who you are and not talking yourself out of your own truth. And yes. what I mean by that is this journey of that we're talking about, right? Of course, optimism, of course, uh, resiliency to get back up every time you're knocked down, of course, all those things. But I think that so many people listening right now, if they don't ever learn to get still and hear their own truth and hear their own intuition, I think what's going to happen, and this is what happens to most people, is they end up uh, staying in their comfort zone. They end up uh, uh, putting other, their own immediate failures on a pedestal or other people's opinions or self-doubt. They end up talking themselves out of their own truth. And then they end up never actually becoming the person they're born to be. So for me, I don't think like the fact that I was able to build a billion dollar company is a victory. I think the moment of me knowing this is what I'm supposed to do and trusting it, even when it doesn't make sense. Um, and I'll give you one example, okay, of, yes. of, of this. So and maybe this will this will make sense because optimism, of course, is important, and I, and I know what you're saying. But I think the biggest thing is learning how to hear yourself and trust yourself. I really believe that. Um, there was a moment. How do you where, how do you define that that as a term? Because I view that as self belief and confidence and optimism. I'm just I think that yeah. you're such a you know very quickly I'm like oh she okay this is a, this is my sister like literally within the first three seconds you're like oh I see oh I see. So I just, what yeah, I'm trying yeah, yeah. to do, and I apologize because I want, I'm hoping a different voice might do this for the listener. I'm trying to figure out what words you use to quantify. Yeah. I, I fully agree with you, everything you're saying. I, I'm wondering if you view optimism as, so I think optimism, similar to what we were talking about earlier, sometimes gets pegged as delusion. Mm, yeah. And okay, I've been thinking I got about, you. you see where I'm going? Because I could almost yep. feel you doing that right now. And I'm like, I get you, yep. sister. Because like, like this isn't why I like it's so great. Wordsmithing matters, right? Like, for example, hustle has gotten demonized as like burnout. So I no longer use it. Because I don't need it. You know what I'm gonna call it? Work ethic. Call it what you want. Here's what I can tell you. For all the belief you had and all the love you had in yeah. doing what you were doing, I'm a pretty confident based on your outcome, that there was a lot of work ethic there. And so whatever you wanna call it, and sometimes I just think about, I know the word hustle triggers people, so I use the word work ethic now because I don't wanna ever not let anybody who cares to listen to me not realize that if you don't put in the work, it is impossible. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with that. And I just had a big aha moment that what you're saying is optimism. I a billion percent agree with, and I, I, I'm thinking of that right now as belief. Um, right. Same thing, yep, that. and now I'm right there with you. Like, here's the thing, when, when and then I wanna share one quick story with you too yes. that I that hopefully someone listening right now maybe needs to hear, but I mean, when I look back, it's like when people are like, oh, how did you start with close to nothing and build a billion dollar company? It's like, yeah, I got, you know, I got back up every time I got knocked down and I followed my gut and I worked really, really hard. Uh, but I do think that one of the most important things I did was just like how to build a billion dollar company from nothing. Like I think one of the most important things is making that decision to believe that you can. Yes. And for me, that that's optimism, exactly what you're saying. And I, and I guess I call it belief. So yeah, a million percent with that. Um, and one more thing just on maybe people listening to us right now, they're like, oh, Gary, like Jamie, I, you know, I trust my gut sometimes and it's wrong. Or I tried it once and it didn't work. Or I don't know how, you know, don't know how to hear my own intuition. I just want to say, I think that it is a muscle that we can all build. And I think people have to give themselves grace, right? It's almost, it reminds me of like, when you start to meditate, a lot of people try it and they can't do it. They're like, they go through their to-do list in their head the whole time they're trying to meditate or, but you have to like give yourself grace and start. And you know, what I would say, uh, whether it's entrepreneurs or someone who's 14 years old and out there dating right now, I would say when you start to look back at your experiences, and think about moments when you had a gut feeling and you didn't follow it. Like we've all dated like a sketchy guy or, a ske <laughs> like a, or had a, <laughs> and like, you're like, you know, his phone didn't really just, just like shut off for three days or he didn't lose the phone. He went right. like, you know, and then you kind of make that decision of like, you, okay. You talk, talk to me about, I mean, we are really vibing here. I actually want to talk to you offline because I just have had the thought. Um, talk to, like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm so excited. Right. 
insecurity. Yeah. Right, because you're like, to me, like thinking to my girlfriends, friends that were girls that were dating guys that I knew what the guys were doing, which was they were preying on my friends' insecurities and sometimes brilliant, beautiful girls. And I'm like, this fucking sucks. Yeah. This woman, it really triggered something in me. This woman, I'm thinking about four or five friends through the last 20 years. This woman is subjectively, and if we had 100 people ask, is a million miles better than this man. This man has figured out the cheat code that if he makes her feel insecure, he has the leverage. Thoughts? Yep. yep. I think that happens every single day. And I think that we, uh, we look for people <laughs> that... Um, treat us how we believe we deserve to be treated. Like, like we find partners so you, so that you, need so, so you go, you go with cool before you worry about jerk off Johnny. This is a big game of your own lack of self love towards you. It's your own lack of self love because here's the thing. And I don't know your friends. So I'll just say this. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a general I mean, statement. You'll, you'll appreciate this. This was mainly 17 to 25 years old, because you see that so commonly there. I mean, in later stages, you know, people are in really deep relationships and you're in different parts of your life. When you're going through high school and college, you're spending so much time with people, you get better reads to the clean, the cleanness of the data is like, oh, this is really fucked up. When you're older, you're running in different circles, you don't really get to see it as easily. Right, and I think that whether, you know, no matter your age, this is what I believe, I think that, <laughs> when someone's treating us like crap and we stay with them. I think it's because it's we deep down inside don't believe we deserve better yet. And here's the thing, for, for people like that that are dating your friend who's totally screwing them over, right? If you were to bring the, the best, most, most amazing, beautifully like kind person into their space, that same girl would probably put them in the friend zone. I couldn't because agree more. Yeah, because they don't I couldn't, yet. I couldn't deep agree down more. inside. Yeah, believe. Okay. yeah it's, that it's they, what, they deserve it's what more. It, and, and also, people value different things through their life. Mm. You know, one of yeah. the things, you know, right now we live through a generation desperately interested in blaming social media for lack of accountability. They're just pointing mm. fingers, right? Mm. Like, it, if you are in a good place with yourself and your perspective is strong around gratitude, an anonymous person's negative comment is not going to ruin your day. Yeah. And I think when it does, I think that's what's so tough, right? That's when it's a reminder to ourselves like, oh, yeah, we have some more work to do. Um, one of the things I talk about in my book, Believe It, is just that ability to learn to turn down the volume uh, on certain things and turn up the volume on other things. Like one, one example, and um, we were three years into building the company, right? I was hearing no from everyone, Gary, like for all the retailers I dreamed of carrying our products that I used to shop in, right? I would save my tip money. Like I mentioned as a Denny's waitress and buy products in the department stores. or in and, what, and what, and what, what, what year was this? Uh, so, so we launched 2007, uh, like I quit my job 2007. I wrote the business plan on my honeymoon flight to South Africa with my husband, not right. the most romantic way to kick off a marriage. And we both got back, uh, quit our jobs, dove all in. I thought Gary, maybe so many entrepreneurs listening. I thought, oh, if I just pour everything I have and actually create a product that works, like it's just going to sell. If it's that good, it's just going to sell. Uh, and then I didn't realize it would be the hard. I mean, I've had a lot of jobs in, in my life, but being an entrepreneur is by far. Well, you especially also built that brand different than building a brand today where you can use Shopify and social media to build it. You had to get a yes from Sephora, Alta, you know, Walmart, yeah. Walgreens, and, and you know, Macy, whoever it was. And that is difficult when you're innovating the way you did. Do you know that my whole life is no? Do you know VaynerMedia? A lot of people listening don't know this. Most brands don't want to say yes to VaynerMedia. We don't want to do a commercial and then go to sleep. Like we don't want to take 12 weeks to do the perfect commercial and then do print ads that look like it or banner ads or digital programmatic. My whole life building VaynerMedia is no. Everything I do is Gary Vee's easy. I just do it with the audience. But VaynerMedia is exactly, I know what you're living through because when you innovate and you're doing something different and you don't look the part, you didn't work at Procter & Gamble for 13 years. Yeah. Or like what's this Washington state thing? Like they, you know, you know what it is. 
Well, and it's wild because I would go in and start, you know, I would pitch the product and, you know, we were staying alive uh, on social media. So we were getting, you know, people were, were writing just blogs at that point and we were selling like one to three orders a day on our website and people were, were spreading the word. That was the only way we, we barely stayed alive, but all the retailers, exactly what you said. And by the way, I've learned this, like when you're doing something that's authentic or that is different. But even if it's just authentic to you, even in a crowded industry, by definition, it's novel. By definition, it's never been done before. And I really believe, looking back now at this journey and and and, and every, I believe that like even even a lot of visionaries, touted visionaries, I think they can't imagine anything being successful unless subconsciously they have they have proof in the back that they've already seen it and it's already worked. So it's like, of course, so many people are going to say no to your dream or doubt your dream if they've never seen it done before. And we had three years of every single beauty retailer saying, no, you're not the right fit. Uh, it's not gonna work. You're not right for our customers. And I kept, and by the way, we talk about gut feeling. I kept having this gut feeling we're supposed to go on QVC because then I could actually like mm. show my bright red rosacea and prove live that our product mm. works, mm. unlike the Photoshopped ads on TV. And this is just something to share for someone who might need to hear this right now, who's having a gut feeling, but it, they feel like they're wrong. Like I kept having this feeling. And every time I would do a meeting with QVC, it would be a no. Every phone call I'd finally get, like I got their head guy, Alan Burke on the phone. Um, <laughs> he's like a legend. He's responsible for building this billion dollar uh, beauty empire on QVC. And I finally got him on a call and I thought for sure it was gonna be a yes. And because if he's taking his precious time and it was about a minute into the call and he said, I just need to let you know, we've reviewed your product with all the buyers. It's unanimous, it's a no you're not the right fit for QVC. And of course I like poured my heart and I'm like, oh, but I am the right fit. And then I, you know, we were down to under a thousand dollars in our, our bank account at that point. So I remember like crying myself to sleep and at, long story short, a year later when I finally did get a yes to go on QVC, um, I took this big risk that, that I was advised not to by consultants. And I put real women of all shapes and sizes and skin tones and skin challenges. And I showed my own bare face and all the things yes. that had never been done yes. before. We sold out at the 10 minute mark. I was crying on national television because it's live. QVC is live to hundred yep. million homes. You knew, and that, you knew the truth and your heart yeah. would win, not you know, students telling you what to do. Yeah, you know, and and listen, it was a big risk, but I feel like I know this lesson that like I know this and now I've seen it play out with thousands of entrepreneurs over the years, but you I know that authenticity alone doesn't guarantee success, but in authenticity oh, guarantees uh, love failure. That. Love that. Right? Love that. I, listen. Always. I mean, you are preaching. You have greatness inside of you. You have greatness inside of you. And I want to share this message with you, especially if you're someone who feels like, oh, your past or your past mistakes are going to hold you back from your future or that somehow where you come from is going to somehow determine or limit where you're going, right? Or that maybe you feel like, because so many of us do this, we tell ourselves stories like, oh, I've failed too many times. I have too many regrets. You have no idea the mistakes I've made, the people I've hurt. You have no idea the things I got wrong, the times I let other people down, the times I let myself down. And we start focusing on this story and we decide that our past somehow now disqualifies us from all of our potential, from all of our goals and dreams, from all the things that we feel deep down inside in our soul that we're put on this earth to step into. I wanna to talk to you right now if you feel like somehow you've made too many mistakes or your past is, it, it is gonna prevent you from succeeding in the future or that you've failed so many times that now you feel like you're a failure, okay? Here's the deal. Every single one of us, and especially if you just take a moment and you Google right now, the most incredible thought leaders in the world, the people that have moved humanity forward, the people who have built incredible businesses, the people that have, you know, helped heal humanity as a force for good or a force for love, and you read their stories, every single one of them has had so many failures, so many mistakes, so many setbacks, has been canceled 
big time and whatever version the society called canceled in that, in that time period, right? Every single one of them. But they're the brave ones willing to acknowledge and not let it take root in their identity and not let their past determine their future. So I wanna to talk to you today if this is you, if you feel like you've been hanging on to a story that tells yourself things like, I don't have what it takes because I've failed too many times, or I don't have what it takes because people keep rejecting me, I must just be a reject, or I failed so many times I must be a failure, or I'm so ashamed of, of, of the people I've hurt or the things that I regret in my life. And when we hang on to those things, we let them take root in our identity, and then we start to believe the lie that who we are isn't worthy, and that those things somehow prevent us from a whole different, big, bright, incredible future that we're actually meant to step into. Your past mistakes do not determine your future potential. They just don't. You know, a couple of stories. So I uh, share in Worthy, by the way, there's an entire chapter called You Have Greatness Inside of You. And this chapter is going to be life-changing for anybody who feels like you've made too many mistakes or you don't have what it takes or you've let people down or hurt people or you've failed too many times or people have rejected you too many times. This is an entire chapter about how to tap into the greatness inside of you and not let your past determine your future. This is so big, y'all. You know, I have made, a lot of times when people Google my story, they see, oh, Jamie Kern Lima, you know, went from Denny's waitress to building a billion dollar business. And it looks like a fairy tale. And it looks like maybe things must have just come easy. Or maybe I was raised in a family where I was just set up to do that. And let me just tell you, I have made more mistakes in my life than I can ever count. I made more mistakes building at cosmetics than I can ever count. I have made mistakes growing up hanging around the wrong people. I made mistakes growing up when I had really low self-worth and I confused attention with love. I made a lot of choices that I share, by the way, for the first time ever in Worthy, a lot of choices in my life that, who do I regret? A lot of choices I've never shared with anyone because I was ashamed of what happened. A lot of choices that led me to hanging out with people that were not good for me. <laughs> and also just like, you know, keeping people in my life who hurt me because I didn't think I was worthy of more. There were times in my life, I remember waitressing at Denny's. I remember, you know, um, I had these big dreams, but I just felt like somehow people like me who come from the way I was raised, like don't ever have big dreams happen to them. And here's the thing I know is that when it comes to your life, when it comes to your dreams, your goals, your careers, your ambitions, like we don't, over time, we don't perform to the level of our potential. We actually plateau at the level of our self-worth. And so learning to do the work to first identify like, oh, wait, okay, let me just look at all the evidence out there of all the people that have ever done incredible things. Oh, they have pasts too. They've made so many mistakes too. They've been rejected so many times. They've failed so many times, but they keep going and look what happens, right? Just looking at that evidence, right? Changing that story, changing the story we're telling ourselves about our past and how it does not have to determine our future is step one. And also just being aware, being aware of the story that we're telling ourselves, right? And then making the decision to believe the truth, because here's the deal. When we believe our past disqualifies us from everything, a, it's a lie. B, it's a thought and a story we're telling ourselves. And our thoughts and those stories live in our minds. That's where self-doubt lives. But when you tune into your soul, you, and if you feel that feeling like you're on this earth to do great things, to love, to serve, to give, when you ask your soul, whether it's for you, you pray about it or you meditate about it, whatever is, is your practice of choice, but when you tune into your soul, for me, I pray, and I will hear the truth. My past does not disqualify me. My past does not determine where I'm going. It just doesn't. 
and, and who I am fully is enough. And you right now, it does not matter what's happened in the past. If you tune into your soul right now, you get really still. You can pause this video. Pray, meditate, whatever speaks most strongly to you. And you tune into your soul, right? You're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are special. You are one of a kind. You are fully worthy. You have greatness inside of you. And your past does not have to determine your future unless you decide to live there. If you decide to live in the past, focus on the past, then it becomes a huge thing. It magnifies and it takes root in your identity. But right now, and I go in deep in how to do this in Worthy, right now, you can literally make the decision. I'm not going to focus on that anymore. I'm not going to believe that old lie and that old story that I've made too many mistakes, so I'm a mistake. Or I've failed too many times, so I'm a failure. Or I've been rejected so many times, I'm a reject. Uh-uh, that is a lie that it's time to unlearn. Okay, so awareness, number one. Number two, just really paying attention to what is that story and making the decision. I'm not gonna focus on that story anymore. Mm -mm. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna believe the lie that my past or my past mistakes are gonna determine my future because they don't. And then step three is tuning into that truth that knows, it knows what it knows what it knows, which is that you right now are fully worthy, fully capable, have everything you need inside you right now to accomplish the greatest dreams and goals on your heart. And the most important journey you can ever take is building your self-worth up and learning to believe that for yourself. So the new story is the true story. The new story is the true story. The new story is that you right now are not your past mistakes. You right now are your present and future intentions. Your present and your future intentions. That's who you are. That's who you are. And you can decide who you are right now. You can decide what you're going to step into and the person you're going to be born to be because at the end of our life, right? I always think about this. I don't want to look back and go, what has self-doubt cost me? And have the answer just be so much I can't even handle it. I want to look back and go, yeah, I failed. Yeah, I put myself out there. Yeah, I got rejected. But like I'm one of the brave ones that I left it all out on the field and look at the beauty and the magic and the incredible moments in my life that came as a result of being the one out there on the field, giving it my all, making the decision that my past past mistakes, my past failures do not define me. And I'm fully worthy of stepping in to the person God made me to be, the person your creator made you to be, the person you know in your soul you're born to be. Today, after a billion days, <laughs> you can always tell promoting Believe It book launch. You get to go home. How's yes. It Yes, I am so excited. It's been it's been cr a crazy stretch. Talk about momentum. Um, yeah, I've been in this hotel room for 21 days, 21 days. Um, but I'm I mean, I'm, I'm super filled up, though, with gratitude. I did a I did a walk this morning and I'm just like trying to appreciate the moment of everything. Um, I'm so tired. Uh, honestly, like I'm, I'm really, <laughs> we've done, um, so two live events. So from the time I got to the hotel room, it's been 21 days. We did two live events, 15 growth day morning shows, um, six QVC shows. So the last 48 hours, wow. why I'm here so long is, uh, I had a live event on, on Sunday, but then went right into a midnight QVC show. Then yesterday had four QVC shows plus another keynote. So it was just, it's just a, uh, a lot, um, but also great. But if you want the truth this morning, I literally, no joke, someone will, someone will understand me in our growth day community. I drew, I did, cause I have more shows today before I fly home. So I, I was doing my makeup and then I looked in the mirror and my eyebrow, this one, I drew it way up here. I'm like, Oh, I got to go home. I'm so tired. At the end of 21 days, I drew my eyebrow and I'm like, okay. So I had to take it off, redraw it. I'm like, this is, a, this is a good time to, to go home, <laughs> to take a breath <laughs> and then to build the momentum again. Cause I'm so passionate. Um, I'm so passionate about what I'm doing and, and it's, you know, I, I believe in it so much. So that's, that's what makes it exciting. But yeah, it's been a long stretch and, um, 
a long stretch, a lot of momentum building. And in some ways, I feel like, too, it's just the beginning, right? Same for you. I mean, it's you've been working so hard on everything with Growth Day. And it's like, oh, but it's still just the beginning <laughs> in so many ways. I think that's the most important thing for people to get. You know, it's like there's this hope that one day you don't have to keep the momentum going or one day everything calms down completely. But if it's part of your purpose, you're always going to be working for it in some way. And it's not going to be easy. Yesterday, so yes, <laughs> yesterday I shot, I'm like, hey, there's always something going on. Like right now, literally my little broadcasting here is just blowing up with all these, you know, stream yards not connecting to Facebook, like all across them. So all is of them, it working no on Facebook what. or no? Yeah. No, it doesn't okay. look like it. It's no. or is it? Oh. It is in some pages. In some pages, oh, apparently. Yeah, I just I just went all these things ah. saying it's not. Oh so, no. Okay. It's like, but that's that's normal. It's something. Yeah. Yesterday I tried to film a sales video, registration video from one of our programs. And if for my audience who knows me, they, they they've seen me on stage talk all day, you know, under no notes. Uh, all of my 20 plus online courses I did in almost all of them in one take, literally an hour long teaching, one take, no problem. You know, seven different topics for seven hours. No, no problem. Yesterday I had to shoot a 10 minute video. Took me three hours, <laughs> three hours because halfway through, I thought I nailed it. It was done. I was so excited. I wandered into the other room to get some water. I ran into Denise in the house and she goes, you have a bunch of toilet paper on your. On oh your no! <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> right in the other room, and I looked. I was like, I tried not to burst in tears because I was so tired. And I looked, and I, and yet it looked like this little white mustache. And I was like, "Oh no!" So I went back to my computer and pulled up the replay. And of course, you can see it. And I thought it took me twenty takes to get that video, and I had to reshoot it over, which took me another like 10 and uh it was just brutal it was just brutal so anyone filming video you know what i'm talking about so give a shout out <laughs> some empathy or something down below because we've all been through it before it's kind of like you did your eyebrow i had a white mustache going on. yeah yeah that's it's so like when you're funny. when you are in launch window i keep emphasizing to everyone there, there's times in your life when you're launch window and it's so intense and it's so hard so hard and you have to work on your attitude keep showing up every day like momentum is all about movement every day show up every day it, maybe you don't get to do three hours on your project today but you get 20 minutes make it a 20 minutes like imbue it with energy you know and maybe you only have you, you know you wish you had this time to do these other things and you only have this little window that little window make it count you know mm -hmm. like launch windows also go a little bit batty in the brain at least <laughs> i do you're drawing eyebrows white mustache <laughs> you have, it's like you just you don't finish all your checklists of all the things you have to do and guess what that's life keep a positive attitude keep chugging along you know and i think too giving ourselves grace is so important like when we hopped on this morning uh, to get ready for the live i was uh, laughing with with sarah here because i was like you know what I still feel like if I had not caught that and I still had one eyebrow up here, I was like, Brendan would still love me. The, gro the growth day community. I was like, Amy, like, you uh, look great. What's happening? Good morning. <laughs> like, good morning. <laughs> We're all I wouldn't even, the best thing is I wouldn't even notice. That's the best <laughs> thing. I wouldn't even notice. Denise would see it from 4,000 feet away. Me, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just captain oblivious. I'm in my message and in, 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 in what I'm ever doing at the same time. I mean, anything could be happening. And, and I'm just so like Denise can walk into a room and I don't even know what's happening. You know, just yeah, it's I'm just so you I, and I would be live. I would get a, a text from Denise and then I would know. I'd be like, OK, thank you, Denise. Yeah, I would go would, fix yeah. it. See, she Paulo, would. Would, my husband, Paulo, he wouldn't notice either. Actually, you know, what's funny is um, when so when he and I met, he had one eyebrow all the way across and <laughs> no idea. Now I love it. I think it's so cool. Like I think Well, I love that you put that in your New York Times best selling book for him. Uh, I remember reading that in the book. I was like, oh, You do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I, I think uh, it's just funny cuz you know, he um he was such an important part of building it cosmetics and it's just funny that when we met he would he would never notice anything like that. And when we actually developed eyebrow products in the early days, this is before we had a team, before we had clinical testing and chemists and all the stuff that you build as you build. But in the early days in our living room, when we would test eyebrow products, 
it was us, right? And Jackie, who you know. And so we would draw different products. And I would have to draw them on Palo too, because we needed multiple data points, right? Anyone out there scrappy right now, launching their dreams, starting it in their living room, building it up, trying to like, like if y'all have asked your friends and family to be your focus groups, then you'll know <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking about, right? And in those early years, it was like even Paulo, there were days my sweet husband had all different eyebrows drawn with different pencils and he had to wear them like no this has to last 12 hours you can't take it off like like so we <laughs> so we would work days in our living room with multiple multiple eyebrows anyway this morning with me just being so tired and drawing it up there just reminded me of that but it's like it's like fun times and by the way you know, a lot of people feel like if they're in their living room right now and they're just starting their dream and they're still drawing the eyebrows on their partners and they're still asking their their friends and family to be their focus group and all that, like those days still are, are some of the most fun days of momentum. Because even though you're in this space where, you know, it doesn't feel like you're getting traction, you're still that momentum, even in the start of something, even when it's like not glamorous, that momentum is still really powerful. And then I also, yes. everyone I know who's gone through the scrappy years um, that, that were hard and everyone I know looks back and those are like some of their fondest memories, you yes. know? But when you're in it, you're like, how do I see past it? Am I ever gonna make it? Am I ever gonna get traction? Am I ever, you think all those things, like, especially when you don't wanna see your own ATM receipt because it's painful. Like, you know what I mean? You hit the no receipt thing all the time. Like, that's what I did for years. And it's hard to see past it, but everyone I know who has that breakthrough, whose company builds, who, right? Those are some of their favorite times. And so yes. I just want to call that out this morning, just saying, like, I'm so fondly thinking about after misdrawing my own brow today, thinking about the days of Apollo and me and like all the eyebrows and Jackie, um, which, by the way, Brendan, I was live on on QVC last night with Jackie, um, oh, which that's is awesome. so just full circle, full circle. Yeah. Um, and so, so just to share with everyone, she was the very first employee we were able to hire full time at, at cosmetics. And we hired her when she was six months pregnant. She, uh, was a girlfriend of mine for so long and we could barely afford to pay her. So we were able to pay her first before we ever paid ourselves. And she was kind of like all in, in this journey. Um, and so to see her last night, such a boss, like, like <laughs> she runs a few departments at it cosmetics. She's live on QVC selling a today's special value, um, crushing, crushing her sales goal, all these things. And I'm sitting there going on with my book, right? Last night. And all I'm doing is going, wow, look at my friend. Like, look at my friend. You know what I mean? Like, she's like great? flying. Yeah, it's so great. And she's such oh, a boss gosh. and just, and she, you know, she had a really, really tough upbringing, which I won't get into here, but you know, she had a real tough childhood and um, went from trailer park to trailer park to trailer park. And, you know, she's someone, um, well, I share her story in my book with her blessing, but you know, she she ran away finally from an abusive household and the police officer that arrested her for running away, him and his wife ended up adopting her as, oh, as a okay. teenager. She ended up figuring out how to go mm -hmm. to school and um, she is just someone who has always believed where she come from doesn't have to determine where she's going. And, and when I met her, I just knew I'm like, this, this is really, and we met Brendan just to, just to share with everyone really fast, sorry to get off topic, but I just think these moments are really special in life, how you meet friends and you never know who's going to walk into your life, who's supposed to be part of it. And she and I met by dating the same sketchy guy. Like she was, <laughs> like she was living with this guy. I met him in school and, uh, we started dating and then one day I get a knock on my door and I open it. He's at my house hanging out. I get a knock on my door. I open the door and there's this beautiful girl sobbing and it was Jackie. And that was the first day we ever met. And I'm like, come in, come in. And she came in and uh, her, her boyfriend lied and he's like, ah, you know, it was a long story. I tell that in the book too. But anyways, she and I eventually ended up getting rid of him and then becoming really great friends. And now it's been a 20 year <laughs> friendship. And now she I runs two departments at it cosmetics. And anyways, you never know uh, when, you, never you, when know. you live life with an open heart, right? You never know like who's going to walk into your life at any moment and change it forever. And I think that's I um, that. 
anyway, so it was a that. special that's moment. Serendipity, and grace. Me. That's serendipity. It's grace. I, I want to yeah. jump into two things Jamie just shared. That I hope you all caught. She shared that, you know, a lot of the founders she knows, business owners she knows, who they look back to those build years with real reverence and nostalgia and like gratitude. And so for those of you who are building right now, where you feel just like all this stress and doubt, just have faith that that stress and doubt becomes strength mm. and development, right? That, that, that what happens one day you're, you get, because of the stress and doubt, you actually get stronger if you work through it. If you stop mm. because of the stress and doubt, you always live there. But if you work through it, one day you get to look back at the stress and doubt or yeah. feel it as it is coming up less frequently because you've learned to master that side of your life. And suddenly you're grateful for it. Mm. I think that's so important. It's not that, and another shout out to Jamie, it's not that she doesn't have stress and doubt as she's launching her first book, but you can see it in her eyes in this morning show and on growth day, her, her energy, she's, she's bringing joy to it this time. She's like having fun. I, I turned on the thing today because we do a pre-show before you guys get on and she's just laughing and carrying on. I'm just, <laughs> just observing my friend laughing and having a great time in the midst of a launch window. So you learn to do launches better. You learn to find peace. You learn to bring joy. You learn to feel the experience and it gets different. And second thing I want to shout out about Jamie, which is what she just said, just watching her friend last night on QVC, which is just, I mean, what a beautiful story for International Women's Day yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, here's Jamie celebrating her friend who's now getting a piece of the spotlight, you know? And so how can you in your own life is there a friend who needs some appreciation today or elevation today? Mm -hmm. Is there a team member who needs some empowerment today? Who can you lift up today? Is there somebody you could just send a, a positive audio text to? Uh, Growth Day mm -hmm. members, you know, I teach this, send five audio texts a day or texts of appreciation to people just to elevate them and lift their mood and spirit. No, no need for, you know, some kind of return of favor. It just send out goodness in the world. And you know what, the more goodness you send out, the more you, you get over yourself, mm. you know, a lot of people want to find happiness and they think, well, I'll sit here and I'll meditate on my happiness all day. It's like, oh, you want to be happier? Send gratitude and prayer out for others. And that will get your mind, the monkey mind off of like obsessing about your merry-go-round of doubts. And it'll put goodness into the world, like put goodness into the world, appreciate, elevate other people. And just hear how Jamie's talking about her friend, Jackie. She's just like, so excited for her and celebrating her. And I've seen Jamie do that over and over for, for other women. So I hope you all will pick up her book, Believe It, mm -hmm. because you're gonna learn a mindset there of, there, there is no competition when you're in your authenticity and yeah. you want to see other people rise up. It, it, it's a whole different path. And that's why she was able to go to this whole other level in building a billion dollar business. So pick up Believe It if you haven't got it yet. And if you have got it, read those first 50 pages Tell all your friends, let's keep the momentum going for Jamie on Believe It. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, rock this house and welcome to the stage, Jamie Kern Lima! Jamie Kern Lima! Every single one of us has had someone tell us we're not enough. Every single one of us has had someone say words to us that hurt. 